Hey internet friends, this is Tim Schrock from Design Build Solutions. Do you want to see a tip on how to draw stairs that uh, change width and work around, kind of uh, go around this wall, and the railing stops at the wall before it continues on up to the second floor? Stick around, I'll show you how I do it. So I thought I'd show you how I built this stair system. I've started off by figuring out the riser height and run and all that good stuff that I want. I've also changed my railing to panels in the when I open the interior staircase specification dialog box. Um, I changed the style to panels and then I chose this style type. Uh, panel type. Now, when I look at this currently, let's take a quick section here. I want this railing to die into a wall that I have built currently out of a polyline solid so I can give it that shape and then I gave it a thickness of a 2x6 wall. But my railings continue right through that, and I don't want that to be seen as in that regard. So I'm going to come back to my plan view, and back in my stair dialog box, I have locked the tread depth. I'm going to pull this back, the stairs back to this point here, where it meets that triangular wall, and uh, then I'm going to copy that section of stairs up here. And I'm going to take a few treads out of that and shrink the width of it. And I'm going to point to point move this corner of this new the second tread section to the first tread section and change that width to meet up to that wall, that triangular wall piece. Now in my cross section, that stairs, that railing still goes through the, um, or past the wall, if you will. Let's take a rendering of this. You can see how it kind of wraps around the wall and, and then continues on. The stair treads wrap around the wall, but the, the uh, railing continues on. So I'm going to double click on this uh, stair and go into my railing. And if I right, turn off the right, um, so the right and left always, 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 you stand at the bottom of the stairs. You think of it that you're standing at the bottom tread and uh, facing the top tread. So if I'd be standing here at the bottom facing down on my screen, my right hand uh, railing would be this one over here. So I'm going to turn that one off. When I do that, though, in that way, I turn off all railings on the right and I don't want to do that. I want to turn off just the right railing on this top section so I'm going to double click on the stairs again and turn on go into the railing tab here railing pane and turn on right. That way There we go. <clears throat> that way the railings are on. Now I'm going to press shift and select this top rail sec uh, stair section. And when I shift and press the top rail section, that is only selecting. Let me show you the difference here. I'm going to double click on this without the shift. 
and I get these two sections. Because I clicked on the top top section when I double clicked, I get this radio button automatically selects section number two, which is the top section. But when I shift click shift and click on this, I can even double click on that top section. I only get one section, and that is the top section that we're selecting here. So the bottom section of stairs will not be selected when I turn off the right railing here. You can see in plan view that the railing is still present in the bottom section, bottom set of, of uh, stairs, but it is no longer present in plan view there. And we'll just double check that by looking at our uh, 3D version there. So this railing die it actually goes through the post, but it it uh, dies at that tri uh, triangular wall there, and the treads then go around that triangular wall. The only thing that I have not figured out is how when I'm making separate um, different width stair sections like this and connecting them, this runner does not align. The runner always goes to the center of the stair section that it resides on. And since the center of this, for, for one, let me back up here. Um, I can turn on the runner width there. change the runner width to 36 here and you can kind of see how that shifts to the left because the center of that second section is to the left of it. Um, there's no great way to I can't I can't adjust the runner unfortunately. Um, that I know of. If you know of a way to align this runner, uh, I'd be really curious in how to do that. So there is the stair section. Oh, last thing I wanted to show you then was the brake line. So I'm going to turn, I'm going to select the top section and then turn on my brake line. And I could bring it down here, but I I can only go to the end of my top section with the brake line. So I'm going to turn that brake line off in the top section. And now I select the bottom stair section and turn the brake line on for that section. And from here, I can adjust the brake line escape. And now you can see how that works there. Um, let's adjust this maybe like that. No, because I want to see the bot. I want to see the wall, solid wall underneath this uh, here. This is a uh, hopefully a quick tutorial of how to do stair sections around a unique situation uh, with this triangular shaped wall. Um, I'm Tim Schrock from Design Build Solutions. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe, uh, and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye-bye.